What up, legends? Uh, welcome to another episode of the weekly show. There really wasn't much going on in the mountain bike world this week, but don't worry, uh, I have found some stuff to rant about. But Pink Bike did this flat pedals, wind medals, like 510 ad. If you're gonna do ad content for a sponsor, I think this is the way to do it. It's at least educational. Um, you know, what's the difference between all the 510 shoes? It's relevant information. What I do have an issue with is they, they really hang on to the Sam Hill thing to sell their flat pedals. However, if you want to buy the shoe that Sam Hill is riding, it's impossible. They discontinued that, I don't know how long ago, but the Sam Hill Impact is the shoe that won all the medals that you're talking about. Like, you know, they're throwing around flat pedals, win medals, like unleash your inner Sam Hill, like all this stuff. Like, all right, like usually how marketing works is like you get an athlete, they're riding a product, you know, in Sam's case, he's a legend and wins almost everything on it. But in 2024, we're sitting here and I can't buy the damn shoe. It's my favorite flat pedal shoe of all time. Check out the review I did on it. And I've got a rotting pair of four year old Sam Hills and I'm stringing along. Um, so to get hit with all this Sam Hill marketing, that was just kind of a kick in the nuts. Um, I really, didn't need to talk about this, but uh, yeah, now that um, 510's putting it in my face, I feel like I'm compelled to. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, as soon as like the penny pushers saw, you know, the skews of those shoes and what was selling, probably the Sam Hill uh, Impact is the worst one. But I feel like when we're looking at these brands, especially getting taken over by bigger corporate overlords, it's like, it's not just the numbers that matter. Like 510 is kind of an iconic brand and the Sam Hill shoe like adds to the culture and like the lore around 510. Like the legacy of 510 is like built somewhat off the back of that shoe when it comes to their flat pedals. And yeah, it's probably a loss or like they're just breaking even on it um, if they, you know, make like a limited batch. But for people like me that are like really into the sport and really care about what products they're riding, like that is the one I've come to like love that product. And there's very few products that I like actually really appreciate. And that's one of them. Um, it, you know, there's stuff that's better or comparable, but I just like it. It's my favorite. And it just sucks when there's like a product like that, that's just taken away. Um, because I think there's just more to it. You know, there's value in having that as just like a legacy product that, will live with 510 forever and instead they killed it. And I don't know, I feel like fashion is so weird. I mean, I'm not one to comment on it. I mean, look at me, but like, I feel like those are so ugly that they, they're they kind of sick. Like they, I feel like they could be in, you know? I feel like if Adidas had a bit of creative vision, they could spin this into some freaking fashion statement. Like sick to roll up in Sam Hills. Like, I don't know, I'll buy some Impact Pros begrudgingly, but I miss my Sam Hills, bit of a rant. You know, maybe I'm the one taking an L, you know, look at me. Uh, anyway, this is this is what it looks like when I work on my bikes. Complete yard sale. We've got the Geometron here. Um, little backstory is I actually sold this bike. It got caught in a train wreck, like a straight up like disaster. It was reported lost, showed up back in the mail, came back to me. Um, and now I'm really struggling to sell it, but I'm hitting Whistler, threw the dual crown on, and it's back in the it's back in action. So you'll see this thing on the channel a little bit. We got Leger coming up. It's the next World Cup. Predictions off the top of my head, I think this could be Dakota's one to get done. Like he's line guy, he's high bar guy, got the momentum. I think it'll be interesting to see if Omri backs it up. I know Loic is gonna be super fired up to clap back because I don't know, what did he get fifth last time? That's basically like worst case scenario for Loic these days. To put down something concrete, um, I'm just gonna back my boy Dakota. I'm gonna go Loic second, Ronan Dunn fourth, Omri third. That was a bit of a weird way around. And then Finn Isles. Actually, you know what? What's his face? Andreas Kolb. I think Andreas Kolb makes it on the podium. He hasn't had a breakout ride this year yet, so I think it's coming. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I almost forgot about this. Okay, Fox announces the Purve, maybe. How do you how do you even pronounce this word? I think that's a you know right off the bat, Fox has taken an L with the product name. That's um, that sure is a mouthful. But these pretty much um, Fox came out with the boggles. I'm Boggle man, 
Super hyped on this product, man. Super pumped on the boggles, man. These are perfect for mountain biking or just straight being a fashion statement in your community, man. Uh, that's how I imagine anyone wearing these would, uh, would assault you with um, the justification for wearing um, this style of eyewear. I imagine this is uh, like a Euro that actually like rides like pretty hardcore. This, this gives me like Julbo eyewear type rider vibes. Like a Euro that does huge elevation, big rides in the Alps, um, comes to the US on a bike park trip or something. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how many people are doing that. The bike, like no one's coming to the US to ride the bike parks, but um, may, this guy's in Whistler uh, on a trip with his Euro buddies. He's French um, and he's super pumped on these Fox boggles. But uh, I don't know, that, th these, this was just funny. Well, I was about to put out this video, but then the Stump Jumper 15 dropped. So up in Whistler now, got to yap about it a little bit. I think this bike uh, itself from like the frame perspective is really a refinement. Um, but then really the story behind this bike is the shock. Um, the Geo is really similar to the old bike uh, with a ton of adjustability, especially in the head angle, um, high and low BB settings. From a geometry perspective, personally, I'm a little biased. I would like to see a longer chainstay. In the stock setting, it's 435. Um, I think it does get a little longer if you put it in the low BB setting. Um, that isn't really reflected on the geometry chart on Specialized's website. But what I do like about the Geo is the reach. Um, I think Specialized gets the reach number right at 475 mils. Um, they do have the benefit of having six sizes. You know, a lot of companies aren't big enough to justify that many brakes in the size run. But since Specialized can do that, um, they're able to put their reaches at, I guess it's pretty standard, at 25 mil increments. But I think placing the large at 475 is a good number, um, at least in my preference. A lot of larges ended up ending up somewhere around 490 495 but i think the industry is largely pulled back from that and to me 470 to 480 is kind of the sweet spot for a large um you kind of get in this in between zone where you know 495 490 is kind of bordering on xl sizing and then it makes it in my opinion hard to balance out that longer reach with a longer chain stay but then you get into a wheelbase problem where you're just dealing with a massive wheelbase to get the balance out of the bike. I can deal with a shorter reach and a shorter chainstay, but the longer reach short chainstay thing is a bit harder to deal with. So I actually have one of these bikes on order, um, should be showing up in the next week or two. Super pumped to get on this thing. It's been a while since I've, I've actually never bought a complete bike. But yeah, the real story behind the bike is the shock. Uh, they're calling it the Genie. Seems like it's, they're trying to get the best of both worlds out of a large volume and small volume air can. I'm sure if you're paying attention, you've seen quite a bit of that spiel about the shock. There has been a bit of internet noise complaining about the proprietary shock, but honestly, I don't see how this is too much different than just a new generation of shock coming out. There's going to be its own seal kit, maybe its own tooling. It's not like they're changing a frame or wheel standard where if something breaks or you need to get a new part, you're cornered into a small zone with not a lot of options. But this, it's like any standard shock will work on the bike. And if you need your shock serviced, you know, Specialized is such a juggernaut that you're hopefully going to be able to get parts. If you're going to come out with a proprietary setup, I think the justification is that it is legitimately better. I'm really excited to ride the bike and kind of see what the package is like. Compare it to the Drood V2 I've been riding because that's like a very, very quality bike in my opinion. It kind of fits into the same category as the Stump Jumper, even though, you know, the Stump Jumper has more travel. I think their intended use is very similar but they go about it in completely different ways from a geometry perspective, a suspension layout perspective. Hopefully ride those bikes back to back and kind of test out two solutions to, I guess, a, the same problem, which is producing a high performing uh, 
kind of mid-travel trail bike. Um, and one thing Specialized has going is just the refinement. Um, I mean, every little detail, I think, has been really thought out. It's, it's easy to want to hate on them because they're the biggest player in the game. But with that also comes a ton of resources to get all the small things right. Like, I think they have the best geometry headset uh, adjustment with the head angle and then the swap box, like all that stuff is super dialed. Stay tuned for stump jumper content coming out in the next few weeks. Let me know what you guys think of the bike and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go hit some laps on the mountain on the Geometron. More videos coming with that soon. Either way, peace out. I'll catch you guys later. I got better things to do.